I think Mueller's behind the whole thing. Wendy. Oh, I do too. And I know she's digging up girls from everywhere that want this belt. Every woman in professional wrestling wants my belt, but I want it too. And I had to fight inch for inch to get this, and I'm not about to lay down on my back and let someone cover me. I thank you very much. <laughs> We're going to be right back. The dream team, man. The dream team. Clandestine workouts are taking place at this very moment in this particular gymnasium with Rowdy Roddy Piper and Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff in preparation for WrestleMania. We gotta hit the gym. We gotta get the road work in and some of that stuff you've been doing. Stay hungry. I'm gonna get it. Do it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, T. What is going on here, Cowboy Bob? He's in thought, Daddy. Meditation. He's out of balance. Go, T. T. Hurry up, baby. What in God's name are you doing? <laughs> what in the world? It was destiny that brought us together. We are the dream team. Hulk Hogan and Mr. T have been granted the ultimate yuppie honor, co-hosting Saturday Night Live. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. T and Hulk Hogan. You know something, everybody out there, man, they've been seeing me and my main man T for the last seven or eight weeks training all over the country, man. Hey, Go. Hey, hey. All right. Uh, Give me some of that. Piper and off you dead meat. You dead meat, and I pity you, fool. And welcome to OSW Reviews, the old school wrestling vodcast. We bring it live from the 80s via satellite in glorious grapple vision. This is your host, Jay Hunter, and this, the inaugural edition, the inception, if you will, of video reviews of old school WWF pay per views. And where better to start than at the granddaddy of them all, the first ever. Capital Carnage. Only kidding, this is WrestleMania 1. Before we get started on the review, I just want to go on a quick preamble about WrestleMania and the state of pro wrestling in general coming into this event. I uh, just got to do this for WrestleMania 1 so everyone's on the same page, brah. In the late 70s, America's wrestling was split up into different territories, many of whom were part of the governing body called the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance, and Vince McMahon Sr.'s WWF wasn't. At the time, it was strictly against working practice for different promoters to go head-to-head -head with each other you know, running shows in their own town, poaching talent, that kind of thing, they had a working deal. But McMahon had loftier goals, to unite the whole of America under his pen, under his iron fist. Thanks to Vince Jr.'s ruthless entrepreneurship, fantastic foresight and business acumen, McMahon started buying up talent and regional TV slots, and immediately he started reinvesting the money into doing the same over and over again, so he was able to sign the biggest names and invest wisely into production values. By the mid-80s, it was really just Vince McMahon's WWF, JCP, Jim Crockett Promotions, which would turn into WCW, and waning territories like the USWA, AWA, that kind of thing. Vince's company continued to grow, setting up national syndicated deals all across America on regional TV, i.e. in specific states only, and then cable TV on the USA network, which is broadcast all over the country. So while Crockett was viewed as more of a regional southern wrestling, Vince's World Wrestling Federation was in the mecca of media attention in New York. So it was quite lucky that Vince McMahon was uh, around the northeast, living paycheck to paycheck with his Madison Square Garden shows. At the same time, MTV was just starting out just down the block in New York City, and both the WWF and MTV decided to co-promote for a mutual benefit. So the rock and wrestling connection was born, thanks to Lou Albano really, who met Cindy Lauper on a serendipitous plane ride to Puerto Rico. Uh, they hit it off, he appeared in her music video, Girls Just Wanna Have Fun, as her dad. Uh, the first of many music videos of hers to feature WWF wrestlers. She started the ball rolling on screen when she came onto Roddy Piper's interview segment, Piper's Pit. On screen, Albano heeled out on her, calling her abroad and going down the chauvinistic route until she smacked him with her purse. This led to two WWF specials on MTV. The brawl to end it all and the war to settle the score. On the former, aided by Lauper, Wendy Richter ended Moolah's 28 year run as women's champion, which was across the NWA and the WWF. And on the latter, Moolah's protege Leilani Kai took the belt from Richter, setting up the rematch at WrestleMania 1 six weeks later. 
But the main event going into WrestleMania 1 was Hulk Hogan. A uh, quick word on Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan wrestled in the WWF for Vince Senior in the late 70s as a heel. The word Hulk itself is licensed from the comic book character from Marvel, and Hogan was the Irish name that Vince Senior gave him. Hogan did a three year stint in New Japan Pro Wrestling where he was a megastar. There, he George Lucas himself, selling a shit ton of merch and making all the profit. He returned to America to film Rocky Tree. A Vince Senior fired him over this, believing it to break kayfabe and unacceptable for a wrestler to take time off for this reason. So instead, Hulk went to Vern Gagne's AWA. Vern soon turned Hogan face, coming out to Eye of the Tiger and ripping the t-shirt off and using the term Hulkamania. He soon rose to face AWA champion and Gagne's best mate, Nick Bockwinkle. But Gagne didn't want Hogan as champion because 1. He didn't have good wrestling fundamentals and 2. Gagne and Hogan couldn't agree on their cut of Hogan's merch sales. Think about that. The AWA's Vern Gagne turned down Hulkamania. Hulk Hogan was a huge international celebrity and Rocky III had just come out. Whoever had Hulk Hogan was going to be the leading wrestling company in the country and the world. Gagne also wanted more control over Hogan's Japan bookings. So the WWF, now spearheaded by Vince Jr, swooped in and got Hogan. And thanks to Hogan's amazing showmanship and Vince McMahon's talent, they made each other millions and the WWF would rule the wrestling world for the best part of a decade. The WWF's version of Hulkamania started the day he won the WWF title, but when was that? WrestleMania 1? No? Those MTV specials? No. It was an MSG house show on January 23rd, 1984. Although returning to the WWF as a heel in December 83, Hogan turned face by doing a run-in and saving Bob Backlund in early January, and three weeks later captured the title from the Iron Sheet, Bob Backlund having a kayfabe injury. should remember that booking for WrestleMania 9. The main event of WrestleMania 1 is Hogan and Mr. T vs Piper and Orndorff. This stems from MTV's The War to Settle the Score, which had Piper and Hogan in a title match that ended in a big schmoz. Lots of training vignettes aired the weeks prior. You know, it's actually an urban legend that WrestleMania was originally going to be called Hulkamania, since the whole event was just a vehicle to promote Hulk Hogan. <laughs> There's no doubt who's going over. But it's much better for all involved that they decided to keep the title more generic. At the time, they had no idea that this show was even going to be a success. Actually, it was looking like it was going to be a failure, based off ticket sales and general buzz until 7th to 10 days leading up to the show. Anyway, I'll talk more about that later. Let's find out how the first big use of wrestling and celebrities on the grand stage all went down. Yep, this is the throw to the pay-per-view rundown. Welcome everyone, this is the inaugural edition of OSW Review. So this is Jay Hunter talking, the host. Joined tonight with Mr. OSC. Hello. Yes, very good. Neo. Thank you. Well, the three of us do comprise of the brig. We've been wrestling mates um, for geez, over 10 years. Steve, you've been watching wrestling for? Probably now about 25 years, I'd say. And you are how old? 28. So that, no, that can't be true. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to this pay-per-view run then. Okay, WrestleMania 1 starts with an opening video in space to Phil Collins' Easy Lover as Vince runs down a card. It's kind of reserved. Uh, we'd see him get really amped, really loud, really coked up over the next few years as he introduced the pay-per-views as he throws to our commentators for tonight, Gorilla Monsoon and Jesse Ventura. All right, then you see a young-looking Fink who meekly announces, Welcome to WrestleMania. It's, you know, there's no pomp or circumstance. Uh, as Mean Gene sings Star Spangled Banner, not America is Beautiful. Uh, unlike Christina Aguilera, he has crib notes and that he refers to constantly, but he does get it right. You know, um, Long-time WWF ring announcer Howard Finkel is often credited with giving WrestleMania its name. Um, if you saw the true story of WrestleMania DVD, he says it uh, comes from... What, are you shaking your head? Are you calling uh, me a liar? Uh, no, I haven't seen it. <laughs> I haven't seen Dress of Best of WrestleMania, whatever it is. All right. oh, it's good, it's good. Yeah, uh, you give it a watch. Like, um, anyway... Um, so WWF announcer Mean Gene Oakland, he did volunteer to sing the US National Anthem after the original scheduled celebrity singer no-showed, but who they wouldn't, they wouldn't name that? names. 
No, no, no. Try to try to poke and them. Here's them with Cindy Lauper in the crowd. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ready-made celebrity guest singer there. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I've heard, I've heard it sing. So. <laughs> I, I suppose me and Jean probably did a better job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, throw to Alfred Hayes, no relation, who sets up the first ever match at WrestleMania. So it's Tito Santana versus from parts unknown, weight unknown. It's the Executioner. Um, Talent unknown. <laughs> <laughs> So do you want to add any thoughts about this match? Okay, okay, what have I got here? I um, just wanted to say that the interviews themselves were atrocious. <laughs> um, you're going to hear me say that word probably a lot during the next couple of hours. But uh, now, the mass executioner, initially I was thinking because of they were setting it up with this feud of Greg Valentine, I was like, oh, it must mm-hmm. be Greg Valentine. And then I realized this guy has a lot more charisma than Greg Valentine and that's and that's saying something to be honest it's not saying much is this Excuse with me. having a mask on then? he's got a mask and he kind of had a high pitched voice so do you know who the actual executioner was <laughs> well I see uh, the executioner was Playboy Buddy Rose uh, who's mainly from the AWA who had notable feuds with Piper and Snooker uh, this is his only WrestleMania appearance which not it's not really an appearance though is it because this is a generic gimmick like yeah um, it, yeah pretty terrible but anyway um, I just a couple of points that I noted was something we were discussing just a couple of weeks ago uh, that really bugs me about wrestling the crisscross to start the match <laughs> yes <laughs> get in get in this is like, something when did we lose the crisscross I don't know but it really maybe it'll make a comeback but I, I have to say <laughs> it went on for about what 20 seconds more maybe <laughs> I don't know what they were doing. I don't know what they were trying to achieve by running in the ropes and avoiding each other. Anyway, I think one of them might got might have gotten gassed by that. Yeah, I know. Oh, they, it's the you know, it's the ultimate warm up to a match. Like they look so athletic. I mean, it's, it's scary. <laughs> <laughs> they can run for twenty seconds. Um, <laughs> and I remember that's like twenty seconds of a, of a four minutes fifty second match. You know, so I mean, <laughs> you think, like, first, they all their first part of this match. You know, we're, we're crisscross. Yeah, it was. So um, the other thing I noticed was, I think you noticed this as well, that the ropes were were quite wobbly, uh, flaccid, if you will. <laughs> and, uh, as soon as they bounced off the rope, it's like, what's what's this? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's and like an indie show. Then the other thing then was, I have to admit, I was not at all impressed with Santana. Um, I thought he was a bit quicker, a bit more um, agile, a bit more athletic, but eh, a bit sluggish. Uh, probably, he probably didn't have a huge amount to work with, but quite a nice figure four to win the match. Mm, mm. Um, yeah, see how jauntily he applied it. He was definitely working as a face, you know. Mm. Um, just just some notes on that. Um, before the Bell Venture actually sells that WrestleMania is living up to everything he expected it to be. This is before the first match. <laughs> you know, that's, that's just a little premature. Um, you might notice, depending on the arena, if they like the crowd or don't like the crowd, so sometimes it looks like a 70s house show and sometimes it looks like an 85 house show. You know, um, If you notice Executioner, who's constantly Bubba Ray, you know, he's hitching up his jocks. Didn't uh, notice that. No, I, I was looking at his jocks very close. Oh, yes, I'd say you were. <laughs> um, so Trish Stratus must be pissed, you know, she's always Trish giving out about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so his flying forearm wasn't a finish either. He, it was just a setup. So mm. Mm. it's like uh, very much like Shawn Michaels with the elbow drop into the switch in music, I think. Yeah, so it was, um, yeah, it was, it was grand. It was. Uh, Is this going to pass? A pretty <laughs> terrible opener to the first ever <laughs> WrestleMania, though. Um, I wasn't expecting, you know, TLC minus yeah. 10, but I mean, I was expecting something a little bit better than Just that. minus 10. <laughs> yeah. uh, That's a step up from atrocious today, isn't it? it? Yeah, it was, uh, no, it was, it was, it was, it wasn't good enough for an opener in okay. the first WrestleMania. Okay. Um, so King Kong Bundy with Jimmy Hart versus SD Jones and they all with the squash. How did, how did you feel about that? Uh, SD stands for special delivery. It's true. Is isn't it that a baby? Isn't a baby a special delivery? <laughs> Hi-oh, uh, I'll, I'll get a bit of shh. All right, I'm pleased to. Um, so SD Jones, he cut a decent promo actually before the match. I was a uh, big smile. You knew he was he was the face, only a big smile on his uh, face, pardon the pun. Um, yeah, served its purpose. Uh, so Bundy then main evented, what was it, the following year? Yeah, that's my new too. Yeah, so I'd imagine that, you know, typical, we still see them today. Cali, Big Show, you name it. These squashes, um, it was fine for a squash. Mm-hmm. 23 seconds of a squash. Mm. 
No, 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 no. Nine seconds. I actually noted this. They were talking about breaking a record. The previous record was 23 seconds, but they didn't. Did they mention when that happened or what the record refers to? No, no. They just said, was it 20, 24 seconds? 23 seconds. 23 seconds. And how... It was supposed to be nine, was it? But it was actually twenty-three. Yeah. Oh right. So which is man, you can call bullshit on that. Yeah. He does. So uh, Monsoon says that Bundy's closer to five hundred pounds, which which is bullshit, really. <laughs> Even if you go on a Wikipedia page, which is plus fifty pounds, he's four fifty. So yeah. Um, he also said it calls Bundy a mountain with legs and feet and arms. So it's nothing like a mountain. No, 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 no. no. So what would you say he looks like, though? There's um, been another he, description. He looks. Well, to me, he looks like a big baby. <laughs> <laughs> so there was two babies in the ring. Hence the special delivery. <laughs> no, any, any thoughts on what he looks like? I think he's like money. He seems to get heavier without interest. Hey! <laughs> um, I, I think in like, you know, maybe 320. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'd say he looks kind of like a condom with legs. <laughs> Just a bulbous. Ne- never mind. Never mind. All right. He has a fat neck. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, at least you won't. You know, he won't break it. Well, no one will pile drive him. So, um, Bunny gets a pinball victory in a squash match. Uh, Post match in ring winner in this one. That's pretty cool. It's like the UFC. Um, yeah. Okay. So next match. Uh, so wait. How how did that go for you? Is that just ends the nothing? Really? As a squash, fine. Um, I did. I did notice the pre warrior days. The big splash off the canvas for the finish. Oh, I love it, I love it. Is that the, the run horizontally, jump vertically? Yeah, and actually, it's it's obviously <laughs> going to increase the impact tempo, so that and was almost great. royalty free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, uh, match number three is Matt Byrne, the son of tough Tony Byrne, uh, versus Ricky Steamboat. Uh, and did you know, uh, Steamboat debuted three days after Byrne, jobbing out the Brooklyn Brawler, aka Steve Lombardi, and previously Steamboat had been engaged in a hot food with Flair in the Mid-Atlantic. Um, so I thought this match was just kind of there. What did you think? Um, I actually thought um, not bad. I think Matt Bourne had a decent gut wrench suplex during the match, mm. if I recall. That I was quite impressed with, especially for whenever eighty four. Matt Bourne, now wasn't uh, wasn't Doink called Matt Bourne? Very good. Yeah, yes, the the one and the same. Yeah, yeah. they are. Yeah, yeah, that's really? it. That is Doink okay. before his time. Okay. So not uh, Doink's first appearance, but. Uh, Tough Tony Vaughan's kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, note on a couple of things. The first is the pre-match interviews. So um, Mean Gene, um, he interviews Matt Bourne. So Matt Bourne's talking to the camera, saying, you know, he's going to kick Steamboat's ass, yeah. blah, blah, blah. He walks away, and then all of a sudden, uh, Mean Gene turns slightly to his left, and there is Ricky Steamboat saying the same thing to the camera about Matt Bourne. Why didn't they just say it to each other? <laughs> They're very polite people. Yeah. <laughs> they, yeah. They've got two cameras, camera one. <laughs> camera two. This is crazy because I was watching the Tag Classic version and I assume we were watching the WWE version because I didn't have any of these pre-match interviews. Did you not? No, no, I was wondering what you're, uh, what you're on about. That, that, that's bullshit. Like, because this is the what, probably the VHS riff from 85, I guess, or 86, they whenever they brought it. should have had the pre-match interviews yeah, on no, it anyway. No, no. But, but it sounds like uh, I was missing out. Yeah, you really were. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty special. Um, and one other thing I noticed yeah. was Steamboat was jacked. Oh, God. Um, yeah, crazy road shape. Yeah. For the big steamer. And, uh, I have to. I, I thought it was hilarious. Gorilla says to Jesse Ventura, um, he says to him, and I quote, you know what it takes to get in shape. <laughs> yeah. Less said about that, the better. I think we all know what it took, what it takes yeah, to get in shape yeah. um, in the eighties in WWF. Um, the match itself was grand. I I thought it'd be a bit quicker, to be honest, especially because Steamboat was in there. Mm. Um, and what about yourself? Um, did you notice that? Uh, well, everyone in the eighties had very plain tights, but it was pure black versus pure white. Well, some kind of uh, subtle, I don't know, heel face divide. I don't know. Thought that was nice. Yeah, I think you're looking into that yeah, a bit too yeah, much. Yeah, probably giving too much credit. Mm. Uh, there was an odd inverted atomic drop. It looked quite painful. Um, mm. One thing I do is I love the way wrestlers. It's, it's it's an eighties thing. Wrestlers don't sell like death when they're getting pinned. You know the way because uh, these days you're on the ground. It's the one, two, and then they kick out at the last moment. Uh, in this one, he's trying to kick out from the one count. I you know, was, he's already he's already flailing the legs. Like I was actually going to make that exact point. Not about this match. I think it's a later on. Yeah. Um, 
it actually is so much more realistic. Because think of it this way: um, some you know random crappy atomic drop. You shouldn't have to automatically sell a two count there. You know, mm. you might sell a half count or a one count. So I have no problem with that whatsoever. I think it's more realistic. Mm. It's actually like a fighter how it would be. Yeah. Um, what's this kind of, uh, it's interesting to pace the match compared to like what we're used to now and in terms of their kind of back and forth. But it's very interesting the idea of, of uh, Steamboat being like a high flyer and how we kind of take it for granted now that they're using the ropes as a device where now like really then they're kind of limited to the turnbuckle. Um, I just thought it was kind of just interesting the way um, he's kind of distinguishable back then because he's a high flyer. Um, I would agree with that. Um, it doesn't pass pass muster these days, but uh, yeah, back in the day, I suppose it was well. Um, I suppose it's impressive jumping off the ropes with the ropes in that state. Yeah, back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not breaking your leg. Yeah. 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 Um, one thing that really annoyed <coughs> me the whole night, and this is the first time I noticed it, was Lord Alfred Hayes standing right in front of the entranceway or whatever mm, for mm. the wrestlers. So the wrestlers are kind of walking out afterwards past him and he's kind of getting out of the way to let the wrestlers pass really annoyed that wasn't just for backstage segments he was there just the whole night he was standing there the whole night just I don't I've no idea what his job was that night maybe he was like a toll or something you know <laughs> <laughs> that was it yeah but uh, or yeah no or something. <laughs> no I was I was I have no idea why they needed Monsoon Venture Lord Alfred Hayes mm. and uh, Mean Gene but that really annoyed me hey, is there any uh, interview after this or? there was a very I can't believe you didn't see this pre-match interview oh this makes me sad Gun. yeah Brutus Beefcake and David San Martino um, who actually were walking to the ring as Lord Alfred Hayes was talking and then they cut to the pre-match interview brilliant brilliant <laughs> I love it <laughs> just like in real life it's it's re- hor- horrendous and I I you need to see this interview as well um so this, what was his name? Johnny Lush, what was his, this guy's name? Uh, Luscious Johnny Valiant, that was Sorry. the manager. Yeah, now he, who was, uh, oh, Bruno and David were interviewed, your typical, inter- whatever, it's nothing of interest there. But then Brutus comes on with uh, Johnny. So Johnny starts talking, you know, typical 80s heel, and he says to uh, Brutus, um, you tell him Brutus. So he kind of stands in front of him, and then he kind of realizes and moves out of the way. And there's silence, dead air for about five seconds because Beefcake obviously froze. Literally says nothing. Then he blows a raspberry into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> like a newborn baby. <laughs> don't, Beefcake, don't what you gotta do, my man. Wait, wait, wait. That's enough! That's enough! I will not let this man talk! <laughs> that, that sounds amazing. It, it, is, it is amazing. And uh, Johnny then says, Yeah, I'm the mouthpiece. You don't need to talk. I'm gonna talk. And just picks up again. <laughs> Hilarious, yeah, absolutely yeah. hilarious. <laughs> was he having a laugh, or is this? No, he obviously he, didn't know what to do. That's that's amazing. I reckon, like, he must have been wrestling for like twenty years at that point. You know? Ah, no, not twenty years. Well, you know, he's not a young spring chicken. Like. No, he's 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 no uh, Triple H. You know. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we got Brutus Beefcake with Luscious Johnny Valiant versus David Sammartino with Father Bruno Sammartino. Um, I didn't think the two got along weather uh, well together at all. Uh, they seemed like they were just wasting time until the finish. Um, I don't know, do you want to take us through it? Um, yeah, it's similar enough. I actually thought uh, Beefcake did a decent job with his kind of heel stalling at the yeah. start. Yeah, mm-hmm. He got the crowd into it. The crowd were obviously going to be into it because of uh, Bruno Sammartino was there. Mm-hmm. So there was a lot of heat. Um, but I think Beefcake did his job quite well. Um, quite a few rest holes as far as I remember. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It was, I have down written down here, really boring match. It's Randy Orton boring. That's what I'm calling it. It <laughs> wow. was really, it was that bad. It was that Some bad. Some kind of Randy Borton. It, really, sort of something like that, yeah. Um, Were there actually, headlocks in this? A lot of headlocks. Well, I think, was it David was, San Martino was working the leg, I think, of Beefcake for quite a while. Um, I kind of was, I was going in and out, to be honest with you. Um, one thing I did enjoy was commentators talking about baby oil. <laughs> did you did you pick up on that? <laughs> Again with the baby, I, I did not. Go on. Oh, um, oh yeah, yeah. Go on, go on. Yeah, Explain so, to us. so saying, for so uh, it sounded that Ventura was trying to justify why they use baby oil that it's functional, but he never really explained why. And then he said, and Monsoon was very adamant that they joined in. They were, oh yeah, yeah, that 
it clogs up your pores so it doesn't let your skin breathe. Mm. I don't know what the relevance of that has to do with anything, and I, so I suppose they don't... They... I, I'd imagine that's a bad thing. You clog the pores and you overheat when you overexert yourself, but I guess it makes you... You're, you're slippery, you know? So you're harder to, you know, get a moves applied to you. Yeah, right, okay. something in the, At least they were discussing it. You know, you'd never hear commentators discuss, uh, you know, trivial matters like that. But you know, it's some pragmatic. Well, they probably have nothing matters. else to say. I mean, there was nothing really going on in the match. But what did, <laughs> what did you think? Of um, it? I was impressed that, like, because uh, you know, WWF and Bruno San Martino are talking about, you know, footage that we don't have. But like Bruno just got a massive pop, you know, and yeah. um, so I reckon this should have been a tag match, including San Martino and Valiant, and not this single stalling match until the bullshit finish. And yeah. um, just just on uh, Bruno and San Martino, you know, Meltzer uh, from the Wrestling Observer compiled the top wrestling draws in the world based on gates and ratings, all blah blah blah, and San Martino was number one. So, yeah. like, if you said greatest wrestler in the world, uh, the guy who drew the most money, that's San Martino. Uh, FYI, just Hogan's number two, Austin's number seven. He would have been higher if he wasn't only wrestling for about three years before he got injured. And uh, Cena's number sixteen. I'm I'm shocked. Mm, mm, that's that's crazy. crazy. That is shocking. Um, I'm surprised that Sabertino's number one. I well, he, I suppose was he wrestling for like twenty years nonstop or something? Mm. But Arnie, he was huge. He was. That means he's bigger than Hogan, like. Yeah. Yeah. Mental. Like. I I am I'm shocked about that. Well, what's what was Hogan? Number two. Okay. Yeah, how'd you like that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, another thing I find interesting about the the pacing of this match where, you know, it's almost thirteen minutes. So if you think you're watching this one individual singles match, um, you know, as you commented on, like it does feel like a tag match. When you think like the main event um, with Hogan like was over thirteen minutes and like you're already like nearly thirteen minutes of this match, which is longer than the last three you've already watched, it's broken the whole pace of the pay per view because you're kind of Exhausted, you know, you're kind of like you know not that interested, you know. So you're kind of thinking, oh, I need a bit of a break from this, you know. So I found that this stage, the pacing was a bit unusual. That a singles match would be as long at this stage of the pay per view. I just found that the the pacing for me kind of threw me off a bit. <clears throat> yeah, definitely. It was over ten minutes before we just got the two run-ins and the schmoz, you know. Um, yeah, and what you were saying, you're right that it was. Everyone was just waiting for. San Martino, Bruno San Martino to get involved, and when he did, there was a huge pop. And a, yeah. yeah, that's great. The pop was more, yeah, because we want to go get some food. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's finally <laughs> over. Um, yeah. Did yeah. you like uh, Beefcake's tights? Um, they were kind of they were similar enough to what he was wearing like ten years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but he was wearing them, in the, the and this is like the mid '80s, so this is kind of before you know Vince's cartoony wrestling, and he's already got his gimmick down, you know. Yeah. Although yeah. they're kind of. Heel stripper kind of. <laughs> they are a bit, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> he's he's got the cuts just really high up. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh yeah he actually had a great look. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought uh, Dave, David San Martino. He's pretty small on stage. He played the power man gimmick, which is weird since he's so small. Um, Gino admonishes Beefcake for being a bit oiled up. You know that's what you were mm-hmm. talking about. Um, <laughs> that's what you were talking about for you. Uh, Monsoon admin- um admonishes touching the referee saying that you'll end up with the short end of the paycheck yeah I noticed that <laughs> the stub <Yeah. laughs> uh, did you like the picture in pictures as well so like they'd like show the match and then they do picture in picture with either Valiant or um, San Martino um, and it's I cutting think, edge like. I think they were doing were they doing that later on in the Andre match as well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I thought it was decent mm. I thought it was decent uh, one thing that annoyed me um, a little bit throughout the pay-per-view was the microphone um, it was kind of it was it wasn't hanging high enough up, so you could see it kind of swinging a lot of the time, <laughs> like swinging microphone. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> Big flip. <flip-flip. laughs> yeah. uh, there was a toe hold from San Martino into a single leg ankle lock in, and back into an endless toe hold, um, and Gino commands camera number five for the shot. You wouldn't hear yeah, these days. Yeah, um, yeah lots of stalling, uh, lots of crowd working, rest breaks. Um, it's like they're completely calling the match on the fly and they've no ideas, you know, just move to move. So, as you, oh, did you notice they say uh, the word Pearl Harbor a lot? It's like, oh, he Pearl Harbored him from the back. Didn't notice it. No, 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 no. Just racist. <laughs> um, yeah, Pearl Harbor. So if someone cheap shot someone from the back, he Pearl Harbor oh, okay. him. They broke it out a few times. You they know? wouldn't get away with that yeah. these days. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the match is thrown out, double DQ, 11.42. All right, is uh, all right. So the next match is is the Intercontinental Title match. Uh, Greg Valentine 
with Jimmy Hart versus the Junkyard Dog. Now, uh, was there any? Yeah. Was uh, there a promo beforehand? Yeah, Valentine, decent. Um, so Valentine was fine, and then Junkyard Dog said that he wanted to chew on a bone, um, and he wanted to win the title so he could buy a lot more bones to chew on. Last to say, in the fish ever come in the world, I need myself a bone to chew on, and I can buy myself a whole lot of bones when I get my hand on that. So that's kind of degrading right. the belt a little bit. The only reason he wants to win yeah. is so he can buy bones. Yeah. Are bones expensive, though? I wouldn't have thought so. I would have thought you would have found them in a trash can. (laughs) That's your... Are they a rare commodity? Um, No, I wouldn't have thought so, no. Um, Yeah, just open a trash can right beside (laughs) Billy Gunn's uh, pants. I have a bone to pick with you. Oh, who are you? uh, Yeah, there's lots you can do with it. Yeah, um, and Junkyard Dog, first wrestler of the night to get a ring entrance. Excellent. Did you... uh, Did they have the uh, grab them cakes? Um, I don't know what it was. All right, they must have had. I doubt they didn't pay for it. I <laughs> <laughs> probably found it in the trash <laughs> beside <laughs> the bones of Billy Gunn's <laughs> pants. Um, uh, just uh, Valentine. He came from Mid Atlantic and he got the IC belt from Santana in September '84. Um, so this match stems from JYD being Santana's best mate and being a lumberjack during a Tito Van- Valentine match when a brawl broke out. Um, why Santana versus Valentine wasn't booked for this event? Uh, yep, no ideas. Well, you know, you might as well not do it at WrestleMania. You know. yeah, why would you? I might mention there's lots of uh, basic movie editing transition, which is great, and I'm going to definitely use them in this video. Yes, no radial wipes. <laughs> <laughs> Star wipes only. Uh, there's a lovely catch the leg, swing around, and the headbutt, and the ref admonishes JYD. How do you feel about uh, JYD with his rapid fire kind of dog headbutts I, I rolling loved, left and you know I love them yeah I really thought they were there I thought they were cool <laughs> something I haven't seen before <laughs> it was pretty over the things to do for both <laughs> yeah exactly uh, what about yourself oh question here um, do you know what the word you know he's got thump on his arse which is yeah, yeah, yeah. probably misconstrued in today's society uh, but uh, do you know what that refers to tell me <laughs> he has a power slam uh, called call the thump Oh, oh, it's, a, right. it's just a power slam. Original name. Yeah. yeah. You think with thump it would be just like I don't know, like a you know, a big yeah. wind up puncher, you know. You no. Know? Yeah, it's uh, He wouldn't want to have slam on his pants, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd probably rather get would you rather get thumped or slammed on your ass? Uh, um yeah, okay. Okay. I thought it was, it was a punch slam. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. Punches, it was similar yeah. to uh, your boy um in TNA. Who? The shore. Robbie E. That's the one. Yeah, he's got a fist on his arse. Yeah, it yeah. remind the thump reminded me of oh, the fist. Excellent, so excellent. Go. Get a fist in your arse. Exactly. Um, so uh, Ventura says that Valentine's making no bones about it, going uh-huh. to work on yeah. JYD's legs, and he fights like a pit bull. Mm. Um, why aren't there any uh, hammer puns? Mm, give me one. I don't know. He's bringing the hammer down. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Maybe that, it's because he's... That was one pun, but I, I'm sure there's more, like... Maybe it's because he's the heel and they didn't want to put him over. Who knows? Yeah, Who yeah knows? That, that sounds right. That sounds right. Um, just uh, FYI, JYD died in June 98 uh, via a car accident. And uh, in 2004, uh, he was inducted into Hall of Fame. Um, now, JYD, wasn't he one of the most over-wrestlers at the time? I think... He, oh yeah, definitely, definitely. He's got a huge gimmick and it was very well received. But I don't know how long that would last if he was actually pushed up the card. You know, like because so if someone's great in the undercard or the mid card, they might change their mind and turn on you if you went into the main event. You know. Mm, okay, and so there was no specific reason why he wasn't pushed. Uh, to he did even win the IC title at any point. Um. I doubt it. Mm. <laughs> if uh, there's a lot of people with no belts, like did even did Jake Roberts have the icy belt? Never. Right. So if he got the belt and Jake Roberts didn't, uh, I'd be quite angry. Yeah, yeah. But I really don't think so. Yeah. Oh, good luck. So uh, how did this match end? This match ended. It was hilarious, and it, it, it I, I thought of you, Jay, while I was watching. It. <laughs> um, As you regularly do. <laughs> so the typical. We don't see it too much anymore, but. So Valentine got the pin with his legs on the rope, you know. Yeah, oh, exactly. Mm. Yeah. So, and then of course the ref came to three. Blah blah blah. Everyone's a winner, apart from JYD, obviously. Um, and then Tito Santana runs out, manages to convince the ref that 
the Valentine's feet were on the ropes. Why would the ref believe Santana? What What is it about Tito Santana? Well, has he, he got a face you can trust? Like he does. He's a face. So he's all a, faces can be trusted. Right. Operator. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if a heel had run out, the referee mm. would have said, "No, no, I don't believe you." Yeah. Okay. Mm. Fine. That, that's not really his bullshit, like yeah. you know. Unless another ref comes out. Exactly. You know. And it depends on setting your pants. Obviously. Oh yeah, it's, naturally, naturally. It's true. Wearing yeah. black or white. Oh yeah, he was wearing white, I believe, as you were saying. Yeah. You know. I. But, well, he changed into his street clothes. So. Oh yeah, and. They, I don't think they yeah. were white. So maybe he just saw he's a member of the audience. <laughs> when yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> a genuine concern member of the audience. So um, and then Tito did uh, one of your favorite favorite spots. He kicked the ropes to in- <laughs> to indicate that Valentine's legs were on them. He couldn't have just said it to the ref. No, no, no he had no. to kick the ropes to to physically. Maybe he was show. fixing them as well for you know <laughs> tightening them up. Tightening them up again. Yeah. I don't know, or maybe he's vexing them. Um. Anyway. So the face wins by DQ and that gets big pop. But do you think the crowd might have thought there was a title change? Uh, yes, I definitely think they did by the sounds of things, and I wouldn't be surprised if JYD mm. did as well. Question: Hot topic, hot topic. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, JYD he uses a headbutt, and I've noticed this hard head gimmick, as in I can headbutt you, you can't headbutt me. Only foreigners and blacks. Really? Hmm. Mm. Do you know any? whites <laughs> or Americans that uh, have the hard head gimmick that have the big show oh he's got a hard head is he I he believe does. he yeah. does maybe maybe that's just because he's huge like yeah, yeah. it would be that's... hard to headbutt him actually you think about it you'd have yeah. to take a bit of a jump you would yeah that's so true. I suppose nobody has headbutted him mm-hmm. But other than that, can't really think of him. Yeah, like, because uh, when you think of hard heads, you think of like head shrinkers, that kind of mm-hmm. thing. Or I'm sure Yokozuna did it as well. Oh, yeah, so. I'm sure. It, I'm sure it is quite racist in that. Um, apparently, they're stupid because uh, they're not American. Mm-hmm. Therefore, they have a hard head. Because they're stupid, and there's a lot of bone and not much brain. Maybe. All oh, right, right. Mm-hmm. Maybe no, that doesn't make any sense. Why JID wants bone? No, okay. He'd want brain, like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I I enjoy Jimmy Hart's. Uh, he had a big bump to the floor outside mm-hmm. during the match. Yeah, back the head as well. yeah, it looked it looked pretty big. Yeah. Um, match was massively over at the crowd, um, and then Gorilla, I believe, um, says at the end of the match that Greg, Greg Valentine is still the IC Championship. So there you go. <laughs> um, all right, I didn't appreciate that lady cheaterly finish at all. Um, there's another Pearl Harbor reference, you know, they hit from the backhand, right? Um, so the next match is Nikolai Volkov and the Iron Sheik, managed by Freddie Blassie versus Barry Windham and Mike Rotundo, the US Express. Um, was there any promos beforehand? Yeah, like obviously the Iron Sheik was hilarious. Um, the faces were incredibly boring. Um, Windham, or so IRS spoke first, sorry, Rotundo. Um, they were both in their jeans and t-shirts he said nothing much and then Barry Windham said uh, me and Jean were on our way to the ring right now and they were in their jeans and t-shirts at the time so <laughs> not sure I if they were a transition <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah little little disjointed there but anyway mm. um, did they have the um, US Express did they have their entrance uh, on the video they did oh uh, do you remember what song played something horribly generic Oh, okay, okay. Because, um, you know, uh, if you ever heard the wrestling album, Real American, it's not Hulk Hogan's theme. It's actually Windham and Rotundo's theme. And so they used uh, Real American before Hogan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, so when I was watching it, they actually cut out the entrance. So okay. there, there's the nothing. But uh, if if you were there back in 1985, yeah, mm. bit of Real American. So was Real American played again later on when Hogan came out? I think, oh, oh you love this. He actually used Eye of the Tiger. <laughs> But, uh, whatever, WWE and uh, Subvision didn't, didn't want to pay for it, so uh, we got Real American. Great. Great. Just <laughs> fucking amazing, man, yeah. Um, the US Express, they did beat Adrian Adunas, or Donald, and Dick Murdoch for the WWF Tag Team titles in January earlier in the year. Um, all right, uh, can you take us through the match? Um, just a point, um, I did appreciate that the US Express were wearing the same in ring gear as I always do with tag teams yeah that that was important Um, what did I see of note during the match Um, quite funny 
Rotundo drop kicks Iron Sheik and he falls forward towards Rotundo and out of the ring. <laughs> <laughs> the Samoa Joe bump. Yeah, I, I thoroughly enjoyed that. Um, he uh, Nothing else of interest happens in the match. To be honest with you, I thought it was a decent tag team match. Excellent, excellent. Mm. Did you appreciate uh, the culottes that Sheik had? I did. Um, actually, it was just the other thing I wanted to comment on was the amount of time. The big Russian, the big Russian getting off the ground. The big Russian. It's like halfway through Jesse went, what is this guy's name? <laughs> <laughs> the big Russian. <laughs> so I was kind of amused by that. Um, yeah, there was some, actually some good commentary. But uh, yeah, no, I actually thought it was uh, an interesting match. Uh, it was actually uh, entertaining. So I was kind of glad to be kind of picking up the momentum of the pay-per-view again from the kind of some of the earlier matches but uh, mm. it felt like that you know it actually said the kind of the pace is starting to ramp up again to something so I was kind of settling in and, and enjoying it cool cool I was um I, it just it just because it went from boring to interesting to boring just with uh, I love talking about Sheik's pants like his uh, remedy culottes like uh, <laughs> it's the most interesting outfit I've ever seen him wear yeah. Iran painted uh, gold on the side so that was pretty nice and Love his love his uh, his boots as well. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 pretty sweet, all right. Um, I just mentioned the the ending. If that's all right. Yeah. Um. So, obviously enough, uh, Sheik grabs the cane, uh, from Freddie Blassie, uh, hits Wyndham, I think, in the back, mm -hmm. uh, goes down, and we have new tag team champions. Um. So then, Lou Albano, of course runs in and starts remonstrating with the referee about Jeez, what happened. Tito not available. Then. Tito wasn't available this time and then the referee completely ignores him so maybe he doesn't have that quite that face that you really instantly want to trust. Um, he also kicks the exact same rope that Tito kicks early on in the night um, and I don't know why he's kicking any rope because there's no rope involved yeah. in this one. Um, but anyway the decision stands and the heels come out on top. <laughs> A uh, little trivia note that this is the first title change in WWF pay-per-view history. So, you know, th there's something. Um, something I do want to give out about, it's something about, uh, I, I don't know, like, I know wrestling is, it's, you know, based on stereotypes, and it's, you know, it's ingrained in their culture, and that's uh, why Americans love it. But the Iron Sheik, he's from Tehran, Iran, right? And he's partners with Volkov. But the superpowers were on Iraq's side during the long and bloody Iran-Iraq war. Russia supplied Sudan with large amounts of conventional arms, so they should be on the other side. They should be on. They should hate each other. Even worse, years to come, um, Sheik would be renamed Colonel Mustafa, and we was in the pro Iraq storyline with Sergeant Slaughter. That's horrific. It's like, all right, imagine if wrestling in the 1920s, uh, we wrestled under a pro IRA gimmick. You know, Shamrock's Leprechaun, 26 and 6. Uh, then we were repackaged with three lines on the shirt: Union Jack loving Brits. <laughs> In 1920, <laughs> actually 1916. Like, imagine that. Um, That's how bad it would be for Iran and Iraq. Like, because as we all know, Iraq is on someone's girl's body. <laughs> What's that are you talking about? Iraq. Oh, that's Our, yeah, okay. Can we cut that one yeah. out as well? Still your aim material. Okay, so backstage, Oakland gets in a word with the new WWE of tag team champions as she poses with the championship for a picture that nobody's taking. Um, anything of <laughs> anything of <laughs> anything of uh, interesting? Uh, the the Gene Mean comment, which I I had a little chuckle, but I love to see the Sheik at mm. all times as we go. Yeah, yeah, nothing of fact ma magnitude anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, as you were saying earlier, Lord Alfred Hayes, he's not quite at ringside, he's not quite backstage, uh, as he dares to call the next contest intriguing, if I dare say mm. so. $15,000 at stake. Uh, Big John Studd with Bobby Heenan versus Andre the Giant in a Power Slam challenge match. Uh, he goes over the steps and throws to Mean Gene with Studd and Heenan in a pre tape. And uh, so, did they say anything interesting? Uh, said nothing of interest whatsoever. Um, Heenan wasn't great, to be honest, on his interview. You know, I was really? always expecting something hilarious. You know, he usually has a good one liner. Yeah. He had some kind of one liner in there about the next person to see this money would be the bank teller when we're lodging it in the account. Mm -hmm. Nothing of interest. Um, he was not his game. Mm, that, that's a shame. That's uh, in, um Oh, just, just a bit of trivia here. In late 1984, Ken Patera and Stud shaved off Andre's afro. So you see, he has kind of shorter hair now. Um, so there were two huge steps in this match. If Andre the Giant won, uh, he'd get $15,000 of Stud's money. 
but if Stud wins, Andre must retire from wrestling. Um, you'd uh, just just a couple of things on that. I imagine like with steps like that, they'd initially broach the actual retirement of a wrestler because you wouldn't kind of start doing do you want to retire steps until kind of late in their career, you know. Yep. Um, also, it was kind of wasn't that high on the card, was it? For no, it was uh, an afterthought almost. Hmm. Um, one thing I did note was initially because obviously I was I haven't watched this pay per view in years. Um, I was thinking very heelish that Andre was taking this match for the money. Mm -hmm. Obviously, obviously, what transpired after the match changed things. Yeah. But I did think it's it wasn't a, a you know the face should have taken the match money or no money. That's true. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it was just to make them seem less bushly by having who hey, we have some money. Mm. But if you're going to lie about giving money out, you might as well make it you know fifty thousand or something, yeah. Yeah. something a little more extravagant, very real fifteen thousand. Like, yeah, it was. Yeah. Don't lose that. That's your pay. Like, you know? <laughs> don't be giving that. You know, yeah. <laughs> giving that other monopoly stuff. Uh, I've got a question. Um, okay, in this body slam match. It was Andre, he had to slam uh, Big John Studd. So Andre is 486 pounds and Studd is 367. So that's more than 100 pounds lighter. Yeah. Shouldn't so, be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they haven't they haven't played up like that Andre would have any spinal problems or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what's what's the problem here? Of course yeah. you can do it. <laughs> 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 yeah. It, 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 I, it, Big John Studd is big and impressive, but he's dwarfed in comparison to Andre. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, is any notes on the match here? Um, nothing really. Um, it was slow plodding, typical uh, big man match. Uh, bear hug in there for god knows how long 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 bear hug <laughs> you know it, was like it went on and on and on um, <laughs> Andre know. Andre was very sloppy um, I'm not sure if five years previously he would have looked a lot better but um, some of his chops his kicks um, at the end I thought it was quite funny actually that he was kicking Big John Studd's legs at the end of the match to wear him down to body slam but obviously non kayfabe the person who's taking the body slam has to jump. So I just thought that was quite funny that he was kicking his legs. So if he injured Big John Stud's yeah. legs while he was kicking him, he wouldn't have been able to slam him. But anyway. There's no finish. you got to change the yeah, finish. you got to change the finish. I suppose as well with kicking someone's legs, I think just that was as high as he could lift his leg like. Yeah, look that way. So you really got to work for Andre to make him look good. Um, I actually read Bobby Heenan's book quite recently, um, and it's typical. I'm great. Um, you know, it's I'm yeah. the reason that wrestling was ever popular. You know, typical wrestling book. Um, but I digress. He mentioned John Studd was actually a lovely guy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, it is. Um, did um, Did you know there was actually some kind of time limit to this body slam in this match as well? Okay. Did they They didn't ever say what the time limit was. Oh, really? So, yeah. Oh, okay. They just mentioned it. Oh, there's a time limit. So yeah. okay, yeah, there you go. Fine. Um, how do you feel about the getting the money, throwing it out, and then running away with it? Really good. Yeah? Loved it. Good heel tactics? Yeah, I loved it. And it actually, because as what I was saying before mm. the match, I was saying very heelish, but then Andre goes throwing the money out, which is great. And then Bobby Heenan grabbing the bag. That was that was top touch. Does that count as a, like a bullshit finish, though? It counts as theft. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, I want to throw... Yeah, I suppose, I suppose. Well, what I find interesting is that yeah, I would have referred to this match as like the the easy money challenge or something because you know he was undefeated at this point, Andre, and I never really thought he's gonna lose. So I thought yeah, he's going on with this money. Like, you know, <laughs> so I, and I do think yeah, it was interesting that uh, you know it's sort of a kind of a Batman you know Joker trying to <laughs> yeah, the crowd you know. Uh, but. <laughs> I just uh, pick it was up fake money <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he couldn't throw out real money he couldn't throw out fake money it, it, I suppose it reminds me a bit of Million Dollar Mania Vince you know I can imagine the meeting how do we stop this how do we stop giving away my money oh we'll have a, the set following me and we won't mention Million Dollar Mania again and then I'll call Triple H by his real name and it'll all be real um, but oh, oh, oh. <laughs> but uh, the set's following my general area <laughs> I suppose to stop Andre throwing out the fake money and the crowd knowing it's fake and calling yeah. bullshit they have Heenan grab it and run away yeah yeah do you know they've done the exact same thing uh, about 14 years later? Vince McMahon offered $100,000 to uh, the Royal Rumble 1999 to throw out Austin. And in the end, he threw out Austin, but with the help of The Rock. And so he gave The Rock $100,000. 
and uh, give it to him the next night on Raw and then um, Foley grabbed it off him and I think he threw Musson upwards of $50 into the crowd really upwards yeah. <laughs> well, between 50 and 60 <laughs> Oh, what happened? Uh, that was it. He, he they just went to commercial and all right, stop that okay. shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Give it back. Five like. dollar bills. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming out of your page. <laughs> okay, uh, so now we got Alfred Hayes who talks about the WWF ladies title mm, match. Ladies. Ooh, the ladies. <laughs> um, it's this sh- was apparently. Yeah. The first of two rock wrestling connection matches. Mm, what mm. was the second one? I'd assume it was the main event there with uh, Mr. T and Hogan. Oh, Mr. T, the, the big rock star himself. <laughs> the big rock star. <laughs> and plenty of gold platinum in it. So, you know. um, yeah, isn't it a shame they didn't call Hogan's belt the uh, Gentleman's Championship? Mm, mm. Mm. That's right, mean Gene. Shmula, Lanny Carr, you better watch out because these are powerful words because this is a powerful woman and I'm a powerful manager now because I was taught by Captain Lou Albano just how to manage. Wendy Rector, your thoughts? I didn't lose that belt to one person. I lost it because Moolah interfered in my match, and I'm dead set on getting it back where it belongs. All right, ladies, please, please, ladies, I thank you very much. Cindy Lauper and Wendy Rector, the opposing view right now for the reigning champion, Leilani Kai, and of course, Matt... Moolah, where did you get those glasses? My jeweler made them for me for special occasion for tonight because he's so proud of me and my champion, Leilani Kai. Well, don't tell Jesse Ventura about it. Yes, Leilani Kai, time I am defense. good and ready. I don't care what I got to do or how I got to do it to Wait beat Wendy. I'm going to do it. I'm going to come back dressing with my hand and Victor. Okay, uh, with, within reason, please, ladies. Part of WrestleMania, Leilani Kai, Moolah in her corner to be challenged by Wendy Richter with Cindy Lauper in her corner. Okay, so we got Leilani Kai as the champion versus Wendy Richter. And was there any uh, promo beforehand? Um, yeah, it was, I think, um, Lauper cut a promo talking about how she was trained by Lou Albano or something like that. It was mm. it was fine. It was fine. Um, I This is the first like backstage one I got to see. And uh, I just noticed she kept saying the word powerful. Like, if you mm. actually split something, you can, she says it maybe five times. She's only talking for 15 seconds. But she said powerful like four or five times. Really? It was, it was ridiculous. Really? And uh, how'd you like Wendy Wicker with her yuck promo? It's like, <laughs> I'm going to get you. Ah, I don't like you. It's like, oh, Jesus Christ. It was, uh, yeah, it was a typical, you know, yuck, as you say. But um, I didn't think she was too bad, to be honest. <laughs> um, and was, I assume this was, this was a couple of years before the screw job, wasn't it? Oh, actually, that was coming up very soon. Actually, this really? is the screw out of the balance, yeah. Which was very interesting. Mm, yeah. Then it cuts to Mean Gene, who stands there with Moolah and Kai, and, and has to pretend that he only just now saw Moolah's glasses. And uh, she fumbles through her promo. I'll actually have to give out to her, because she was women's champion in like NWA and NWF for 28 years. <laughs> over 10,000 days. And this is the promo you're giving me. This is like three, four fuck-ups in 10 seconds. I was, it was a disgrace. Um, what did you think of the Luau outfit from Leilani Kai? Um, it was, she's from Hawaii, therefore naturally she has to wear that kind of outfit. Hello, Jay, come on. All right, all right. Um, what did you think of it? Was, it was quite nice. It wasn't okay. quite as nice as uh, Richter's outfit. Mm-hmm. Um, I will give it, like, this match was only, what, four minutes or something? So, you know, that's that's perfect. I was... Well, I wasn't saddened, but I was shocked that uh, there was no real spot from Cindy Lauper. Like she didn't. Mm. I think she did maybe a small schmaltz outside the ring, but yeah, nothing really. Yeah. You know. Um, I actually thought this match was quite decent um, mm-hmm. for a woman's match, anyway, and I thought it was probably better than a lot of the matches that had gone before. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing. I'd, do you want to mention anything? I'm just going to talk about the finish. No, here, no. Is it? Oh, uh, if I'm just going through it. Um, we get uh, we get a theme well publicized run to the ring you want to see like WWE just completely horrid the shot of Cindy Lauper running to the ring backstage La- Lauper and Richter and uh, it's a dub theme because they could they would have come out to girls just want to have fun live but of course they don't want to pay for it now on the version I was watching they did have girls <laughs> did they yeah. this is oh this is bullshit yeah. this is Silver Vision not paying like um yeah, we get a lot of this not paying for uh, themes. You know, you might do it live once, but then you just dub over it and the DVD really does take away. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, 
So it just, just if anyone doesn't know or isn't a child from the 80s, Cindy Lauper was a big 80s music phenomenon, now an icon from garish, awful 80s music and fashion. It but wasn't that awful. <laughs> <laughs> Name one other song she has. Um, the one from the Goonies. Oh, fair. Okay, I, one more I, song. And I seem to remember you dancing to Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so what she would probably, what, the biggest um, music star at the time? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. So these women had swimming togs on rather than, you know, wrestling outfits. But uh, they're still better than what Winter is wearing today, you know? Mm-hmm. Did you notice anything about women's wrestling here? Uh, it, it, it's, it's something kind of random is that silence is that they weren't shouting see women's day it's like a it's like a fucking tennis match like (laughs) i'm not punching so i'm not my lady and i shout you know but this is just quiet you know it's like i don't know japanese it's it's quite nice yeah yeah uh richter real nice arse well done Mm -hmm. uh Mm -hmm. leilani kai you look like a house Mm -hmm. leilani kai got a right nice grab of richter's (laughs) arse actually towards the end of the match um Actually, the ref did sneak an arse pat when Kai was leaving uh, leaving the ring, so, you know, good for her. Um, just there was an awkward black breaker as well, which just did not look mm. nice. Um, all right, do you want to take us to the finish? Um, the finish, what, what I really noticed was that they had Tan the... lines. <laughs> there Great. was a bit of that. Yeah. But they had the slow motion replay of the finish, <laughs> and it was... Yeah. Practically the entire match by the looks of things. <laughs> the replay. It was yeah, so. Uh, what was it? Uh, Leilani Kai with a, a crossbody block off the top rope. Really sloppy. Uh, there was the roll through just completely messed up. Um, so anyway, they kind of landed on the ground and then Richter kind of flipped over. Um, you know, got the pin, and away she went. And then you have the obviously the then the other iconic image um, of. It was a uh, Leila or Cindy Lauper jumping into Richter's arms afterwards. We mm. see that quite mm. a lot, just like the run in, yeah. which is you know I, I I think they're certain pretty cool images. Yeah, yeah, it's good to actually see when they actually happen. Mm. Um, so are we ready for the main events? Um, just the the interview afterwards. Oh, uh, god damn! Do you not see an interview? This afterwards? is bullshit. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah, Lauper looked an absolute state. <laughs> Uh, she had lipstick all over her teeth. Before after <laughs> She had lipstick all over her teeth. Really distracting and quite horrible. But go on. Um, oh, one thing I just wanted to mention that I noticed in this match and previously, uh, one of your pet hates, Jay, was oh Ventura. Every time, you know, somebody hit the, their opponent, it was, ah, oh, to the face area, to the sternum <laughs> area. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, uh, reminded me of uh, Taz. So there you go. Fuck's sake. I, 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 did they think they sound smarter when they say area? Oh, the chestal region. <laughs> the backal area. Fuck's sake. Well, maybe if it's, you know, Cindy Lopper, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> it's just a big dog's dinner area, yeah. <laughs> So it's uh, time for the main event. Uh, thank God, two-hour pay-per-view. Imagine if this was three hours. Oh, <laughs> um, so we got Billy Martin, best known for playing baseball for the Yankees in the 50s, hey. managing in two, blah, blah, blah. He's the guest ring announcer. Muhammad Ali, the three-time world heavyweight boxing champion, one of the greatest boxers of all time. He's the guest outside referee. Outside yeah. referee. So yes. he gets, he'll get an entrance and do nothing. Yeah. Um, I have to say, just you know, the way he changed his name from uh, Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali when he converted to Islam. Cassius Clay is a fucking awesome. It man. is. I've always thought. I've always thought it. Why would you change your name? Yeah, jeez, like that. That's a gimmick in itself. Yeah. Like, yep. um, oh, did you see? Uh, sliding Pat Patterson getting his first of many WrestleMania payoff appearances. He doesn't um, do anything, but he'll get on camera and get a paycheck. Uh huh. Why is why is that? He's just Vince's mate. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. He managed like he'll. He'll work out uh, different spots, like, oh, Miss Elizabeth, uh, she'll need some protection going to the ring. Sure, I'll go out and do that. Ah, oh. oh, by the way, uh, you know, <laughs> cut us a check, you know. So just, you know, keep an eye out for him in future yeah. manias. Um, One thing I'm glad they've done away with is guest ring announcers, guest timekeepers mm, in the main mm. events at WrestleMania. Uh, Liberace was the, the guest timekeeper, mm. and he was just doing the can-can for about five minutes. You got to see the can-can? You didn't see the can-can? No, no, I didn't. Where sure you watch. <laughs> <laughs> this is this another is iconic shit. image. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I was actually giving, I didn't. I was waiting till 
it was only dawn on me until I fil- finished the pay-per-view that there were, where is this can-can because they show it all the time yeah. like, you know so I was able to see Kid Rock's performance with Yay. the Divas coming out but not uh, Liberace doing the can-can yeah. Yeah. you didn't miss much but uh, it's still as, as I said icon- iconic man you gotta, gotta get this WWE version instead that's, yeah. that's the press in me yeah. um, so Piper shows up with his entourage of bagpipe players and ace cowboy Bob Orton yeah what's this ace business <laughs> <laughs> um, he's uh, I don't know maybe he thinks that's awesome I guess I, why do you have two why do you have, yeah that's it what are you Ace or Cowboy yeah. Ace, Bob Orton cow- no Cowboy uh, I guess maybe there are a lot of Cowboys so like he's the Ace in the hole the Ace in the hole yeah <laughs> maybe Ace hole okay. we'll stick with that alright um, so my presentance was, yeah. uh, was great by the way mm. Do you like the live band? Are you a fan yeah. of live bands? Well, sure. It was a WrestleMania 24 scene I had the, the band. Oh, yeah. And yeah, you know I love yeah. that. So. Yeah, very good. Um, he's tagging with Mr. Wonderful, Paul Orndorff. That's, oh, he's heel here, so you can be Mr. Wonderful if you're a heel. So, um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Some quintessentially 80s song hits as Hogan and Mr. T make their way to the background. Did uh, Sorry, so we didn't get Real American. What did you get? Did you get Real American? Yeah, yeah. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> um, so, Snooko follows them. So, Bit of a mania payoff there Bit as well. Of a payday, yeah. Um so uh you know, when you see that iconic image as Hogan and Mr. T, you know, uh make their way to the ring backstage and you can see Vince in the background and I didn't notice Vince. Yeah. Oh you can see him do a bit of zooming okay, like, you know. Yeah. Um yeah, I, I actually made a point. What's Liberace doing? What the fuck? You know? What, what get in the ring? Do do something. He, what, what, you know? But he rang the bell. Oh good for him. That was that was it. That <laughs> you was... didn't see you didn't see that either. No, he was either. sitting outside the ring and they had the camera on for about a minute. Is he, he the ding a ling a ling Yeah, then he had the ding a ling a ling That wasn't a real bell, though, was No, it? but I think he actually hit... Oh, no, he didn't. I don't think he had the bell, the ring bell in front of him. I think the, somebody hit the ring bell, and then he stands up and did his ding a ling He rang a bell. Yeah. But not the bell. Probably not the bell. So that was great. I mean, he got a pay there. <laughs> okay. Hulk Hogan with Mr. T versus uh, the tag team of uh, Piper and Orndorff. Can I just give out, give out a couple of things? Yeah. Um, the main one is there was not one single mention of this match throughout the entire pay per view that I noticed. Yeah, that's true. That's true. What was that about? Um, it was the fastest running two hours in sports entertainment <laughs> history. Uh, I've no idea. Maybe, well, maybe promo packages didn't exist back then. You don't need a promo package. You just need uh, the commentators to mention the match every now and again. The main events coming up. Yeah, get people yeah. excited about the main event. They're all, I did not see one mention of this match. Mm, mm. Or hear one mention of this match. Um, Maybe they only had, you know, six minutes of pre tape footage. We, you know, and couldn't do the main event. Oh, God, know? no. Oh, God, no. Yeah, there was no uh, pre, pre-match pre interview for this one. Hmm, that, that sucks. We did have time for The Executioner and exactly. uh, Valentine, but uh, not Hulk Hogan in this city. <laughs> and um, um, a couple other things. Um... I know we're spoiled with promo packages these days. Yeah. Really hurts WrestleMania one and, and probably the next I don't know three or four WrestleManias that there are no promo packages because for so at the time, fair enough, if we were watching it, you know, at the time we wouldn't have known what was going on. But watching it back now, having a clue, having mm. a clue what the build up yeah. was in any way, shape, or form, because the commentators don't mention build ups at all either. There is a little bit about Santana and Valentine. Other than that, really didn't see anything. Or hear anything as to why these people didn't like each other and wanted to get in the ring to wrestle each other. I suppose they had already assumed that if you're ordering the pay per view, you've already seen MTV's, you know, the war to settle the score and the brawl for it all. Which I'll remind you, scores were not settled and all was not brawled. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting that you know the comments you're making about the promos because even now, like you know, just for a main event, we would have the promo before, right before the event. Yeah, we know it's going to be on, so we don't need it right before. But yeah. definitely, yeah, like you know, out of nine matches there uh, from WrestleMania, you know, as I've said before, you know, that twelve minute slugger, you know, match, you'd want it there. That'd be halfway through the pay per view. <laughs> but it's interesting that like even. The night before, on Saturday Night Live, uh, Mr. T and Hogan were really like hosting the show together, trying to kind of get people to watch uh, WrestleMania. So it's Very interesting good. they yeah. go to that extent, but then not for the entire pay per view mention what's going to come up. Yeah. But I kind of like to talk about some of the history of even about uh, you know Mr. T and even Hulk Hogan and 
how we were actually quite lucky to even have Hulk Hogan in WrestleMania 1 in terms of, you know, him being fired by Vince for actually appearing, you know, in Rocky 3. Mm. You know, again, he had to go to the name of Thunderlips. So we were quite lucky that he was even uh, available to be involved with this. And then also, in part of the promotion of the WWF, um, he actually got involved with a $5 million uh, lawsuit where uh, he appeared on Hot Properties uh, to promote WrestleMania, and he put basically the host, which is Richard Bresler, in a you know a front chin lock. Not exactly one of the moves you would associate with uh, Hulk Hogan, but presenter actually started breathing profusely and became unconscious. And uh, so, I mean, you know, he's is this a worker issue? No, this is real. Oh. So uh, it settled out of court anyway. So I mean, we're quite lucky this guy even showed up, you know. But uh, interesting is that this relationship between um Mr. T and Hogan would continue into even into the eighteen and uh, you know series for episode seven body slam. Thank you, man. Where well done, well done. <laughs> interesting, that Hulk Hogan is totally kayfabe. Actually, is in character as Hulk Hogan. Really. With B. A. Brockus. So it's interesting that this kind of lineage of these two characters, um, and again going back to the comment of the kind of. Um, you know, rock and wrestling is where Vince is kind of beginning to blur the lines between wrestling and entertainment, even from a very, very early stage. Um, I think it's very clever, but also kind of very interesting marketing strategy. So this is kind of my kind of two cents on, on kind of build up in terms of they do a lot of it out in the uh, the mainstream media, but none of it in the ring. Mm. Ah, ah, I like that. Oh, very good. Wow, interesting. Um, just want to mention that this is the only WrestleMania to not feature a WEF or E championship match. And that was the next thing I was going to give out about. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to get me out. Um, how, what were they thinking? This is the first WrestleMania, the biggest event of all time up to that point. Yeah. And they're not promoting their championship see we settled the score on MTV so you know Mania doesn't matter like yeah. who gives a shit about Mania you know <laughs> is there any reason why they didn't have uh, Piper versus T and Orndorff versus Hogan um, well we would get yeah I guess yeah no we did get uh, Piper T next year is that something it's something but it's not enough <laughs> <laughs> it's the nothing, right? Yeah. Um, did you hear about the urban legend about uh, the AWA promoter uh, Vern Gagne that he offered Bruiser Brody a uh, hundred thousand dollars to break Mr. T's leg? I heard that. Yeah. yeah. And Sheik says he was offered the money to break Hogan's leg. You know, um, if if you didn't know, uh, Vern Gagne, uh, Hulk Hogan, well, as no, I was saying there when Hogan went to go film Rocky. Uh, Vince Sr. was pissed over and said, you know, you're a wrestler, you're not an entertainer, which, you know, and uh, so he said, no, I'm going to do this film, and so they parted ways, and so Hogan went to the AWA instead, and, you know, he was doing his Hulkamania gimmick, you know, and, uh, but so he was over in Japan, New Japan, and he was in the AWA in America, and he was making loads of money, so he'd actually print t-shirts and sell the t-shirts, so, you know, he knew about merchandising, he totally George Lucas did, and, uh, just that girl in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Vern Gagne, yeah, they couldn't uh, agree over how much of a cut Vern Gagne should get and the AWA. So he left because they couldn't come to terms with it. And uh, uh, yeah, like he wanted more power over Hogan's booking in Japan and also wanted a bigger cut of his merch. Yep, he, uh, he was on the losing end of that one. <laughs> yeah. So. It's interesting that you know we kind of refer always to Hogan as a shrewd operator, but in in many ways you can see the environment in which he learned it from. You know the idea of you know you know money's power in this case. You know to actually control, have a creative control, but also have the money to go with it. So it's interesting how you can see him getting involved with those kind of politics and strategy already. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And but who do you think he learned it off initially? Is he just? the innovator of politicking or was there somebody that he kind of somebody took him under his wing I, I've never heard of anyone in particular that kind of mentored Hogan like uh, some I imagine that hmm that, that was a tough question I who did Hogan learn his bullshit politicking yeah. from I guess he invented it I guess <laughs> <laughs> like uh, I reckon he he got he, maybe he saw other people being screwed over in the wrestling business and uh, maybe he had some friends when he was an up and coming wrestler and saw I gotta protect my own property mm. and uh, maybe like Vince he was just kind of an entrepreneur he knew where it was going and how much money was at stake so he made sure to protect his ass above everything else yeah 
And yeah. I think so. And actually, that's kind of similar to the uh, comments that Kevin Nash first said about <laughs> Shawn Michaels when they met. You know, he thought, who's this little guy? But when he heard the voice and the kind of the, the kind of uh, focus and he understood actually this guy is, you know, he knows what he's doing, you know. So I think, yeah, there probably is a, a good bit of original kind of shrewdness with Hogan. He did know what to do, but I think, you know, you're going to learn in that environment, you know. Um, Neo, actually, when was Rocky Three released? Basically, it would be 1982 is when that was at. So that's three years before yeah. WrestleMania 1? So if you think about it then with like Stargate, Stargate or something coming out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 1983, you know, a lot of people forget that like, you know, a lot of that Vince um, emulated and just improved on with more media. That's a fine word for style. <laughs> did, uh, promotion. So it's interesting that like, you know, you've got this lineage from really starting in 1982 up until, you know, from, the basic 1985 thing. It was a complete U-turn then. So Hogan was fired for appearing in Rocky Three, and then two years later, or whatever, Mr. T is in the main event at WrestleMania. Yeah, well, yeah. one was Vince Senior firing Hogan. The other was Vince Junior welcoming him back. Uh-huh. Like uh, it was really whoever has Hulk Hogan's already a star from Rocky. So whoever has Hulk Hogan, their promotion is going to make it. And so you got to hand it to Vern Gagne. He's like Hulk Hogan, Hulkamania. Nah, no, nah. Sure, you're gonna fail. Who cares about that? You're just Hulk Hogan, the biggest star in all of entertainment. Right now. But I've got an ace up my sleeve. I've got Greg Gagne. Greg Gagne. <laughs> Greg Amania. <laughs> well, it is interesting that he had that in each other, and then you know, obviously uh, Stallone uh, inducting him into the Hall of Fame and still having amazing things to say about Hogan. So that's pretty interesting. That mm. like you know. The kind of talent maybe he saw in both Hogan uh, and Mr. T, you know, in terms of actual characters, or even now we talk about these kind of uh, iconic archetypes. You know, this is really why they still are even in our generation now because they're just so loud, they're so original. You know, there's you know even the bright colors you can say. But. Yeah, I was going to mention actually about the bright colors that during this match, um, it's it's pretty much black all the way around Madison Square Garden, and you can just see Hogan. Should we talk about this match? Okay. Uh, at just the very start, you notice that Piper seemingly shoots on BA, taking him down to the mat. Um, we would hear more about this the next time around, but it's like he is representing wrestling against Mr. Entertainment. You know, he's the real phony, if you know what I mean. Um, so there's a bit of that. Turns into a schmoz pretty quickly. Uh, if you notice that asshole Snooker went to the top rope to do a spot, but someone else missed their cue, and so he had to just jump jump back down. And I didn't see that. Oh, it's great. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> um, Maybe you didn't like the look of those ropes. <laughs> yeah. Monsoon calls bullshit that the pay-per-view will not end this way, because it just turns into big schmoz. The police agree, and usher the heels to go back to the schmoz <laughs> and continue. Uh, how do you like the double noggin knocker? Um, gotta love it. <laughs> gotta love it. It's 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 pretty special. Um, what what was the comment on? What was the commentary on that? He's smashed both of their heads together, as opposed to just smashing one of their heads <laughs> together. Anyway, I just I, anyway, I'm just picking up. I'm just I'm just being picky here. Okay. Uh, is this has to be monsoon, was it? Uh, no, I think it was oh, really, though. really. I think it was uh, we probably a bit of rose tinted glasses. Uh, uh, much like Gorilla Monsoons um, <laughs> when coming cool. to their uh, commentary yeah. I thought Mr. T was pretty smartly used he you Definitely. know just a couple of slaps and headbutts that kind of thing he was decent mm, mm. Um, he got gas though yeah <laughs> <laughs> but even but he was on tuna fish for the last three weeks so. <laughs> and water yeah and water well, well done no no just, just tuna fish so. <laughs> um, so Hogan practically carries all of the work on his team as expected it's made less obvious with the heels working over Hogan for most of the match um, so did you notice that Mr. T had to hold the string as the tag partner? Yes. Don't you fucking love wrestling rules? Yes. It's like it's textbook. I love it. I love it. <laughs> it's like um, at the starter match, uh, Gino actually mentioned that Orndorff, uh, he did need to tag in Piper to start the match because no contact had been made in in the match. So yeah, they yeah. commented on that. Sure. That's 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 fucking amazing. Like, that's I really good. Uh, that, I appreciate that um, and then as soon as they said it Hogan did exactly the same thing <laughs> um, so uh, Orton and Snuka interfere again as Orton gets to the top rope for a spot who's late 
until he shouts it on enough to turn around, which leads to the finish. Do you want to take us through it? Um, I don't know. I mean, it was... <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, so the top rope spot. Um, actually quite executed quite well, to be honest. Mm. Um, Hogan gets out of the way. Look, look decent. And amazingly, my jaw dropped. There was no big leg drop. Mm. No immortal mm. leg drop. Mm. I couldn't believe he resisted the immortal leg drop to finish the match. He just pinned them. That is, uh, yeah, that's really weird, isn't it? Yes. It's crazy. Uh, good luck with that. Like, seeing, <laughs> not seeing that again. And so mostly a small angle for 13 minutes. Uh, but the crowd loved it, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Could, would you imagine them shitting on this match if this, well, they actually did this year with, uh, with Flair? You know, Oh, I was thinking of Miz and Cena. Oh, sorry. You saw it like it was just a schmoz for yeah. a couple of minutes and then they stopped the match. Like, yeah, you know? yeah. Um, and then they restarted it and then a bit of a bullshit finish. But the face won it, this And it was, um, it was highly entertaining. It was not good in any way, shape or form, but it was, mm. it was certainly there. Um, yeah, and just after, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, after the match, Jesse Ventura went over to finish the top mania and then you see uh, Mr. T Hulk doing into. Uh, get an interview in and then some stills and then some public domain classical music and we're out. I just a comment on the post match interview. Mm -hmm. Um you could really tell Hogan wanted the last word because <laughs> they were interviewing T Hogan and Snooker. Yeah. And um yeah T was fine, Snooker was his usual crappy self and Hogan just kept trying to get getting in there. And then I think T actually got the last word. He said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the yeah, last word. And I noticed Sneaky. as well. Um, Hogan did a voiceover in post-production <laughs> to get the last word. <laughs> he sang I'm a Real American. Um, now, uh, and as an addendum to that, I didn't mention it, was that at the entrance as well, something similar, T walked out first and it almost blocked Hogan. You couldn't really see Hogan walking out. I can't imagine he was happy with that. I just think... They were jostling for position the whole way from the very <laughs> beginning to the very end. The T pull uh, Alfred Hayes like in between them. <laughs> um, yeah, and then uh, as soon as the still started, I turned it off. So did I miss anything? Right. Oh, God, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to check, just in case they had their interviews at the end, since I didn't see any during the pay-per-view. Um, yeah, so that's that's the end of the pay-per-view. So is it March 31, 1985? Madison Square Garden in New York. Attendance 22,000. Uh, no pay-per-views. It was a closed circuit attendance, which is... Um, yeah, so pay-per-view in a cinema, which is really weird. But uh, it was... Oh, it wasn't that long. It was actually the Wrestling Classic, which is a pay-per-view in six months' time, which is actually the first pay-per-view. Like, there would have been... Uh, they would have just had like a test audience of pay-per-view here, so that's really negligible. But 380,000 people did catch it on the closed circuit. Mm, very good. Mm. Um, so just a quick, quick recap of WrestleMania 1. So Santana beat the Executioner with a figure four. Uh, Bundy squashed Special Delivery Jones. The big steamer quelled Matt Bourne. Uh, Beefcake couldn't carry David Sarmartino to a possible match. Uh, JYD won via countout, but not Valentine's belt. Uh, the heel foreigners upset the American faces to capture the tag titles. Andre slams Big John Stud, no problem. And Lawfer's <laughs> <laughs> girl, Wendy Rector, wins the uh, gets the win and the belts for the payoff in that feud. So good for them. And there was one other match as well. Oh, was there? Which? Uh, the main event, main event. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need to hear about that. I'm not sure no one's going to buy the pay-per-view based on the main event. Like. <laughs> that was just a schmoz, though, wasn't it? Like, yeah, but... No, no, Hogan got the, the yeah, pin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was like everyone just went in and then big pile on, stop the match, restart the match, bit of a pile on, and then. Actually, <laughs> was there? Stop saying the word so pile on. I gotta actually maybe apologize to Jesse because even we forgot there was a main event. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, what do you think of this pay per view, Neil? Well, it's kind of interesting going back over it, even um, you know, kind of even researching the match on the, the WWE um, website. It's actually there's very little um, original photographs from it or in terms of apart from the actual, like we have a kind of a mixed viewing of it because of the different edits that were given in terms of videos. But it's interesting, even if you want to see any more information in terms of like backstage and the photographs, it's only like one or two photographs on the site. So it was kind of starting at that point, looking back at another angle rather than just being, you know, when you're a kid watching it once, you know, looking at it as an adult, kind of seeing how it was put together, what was happening in terms of an idea. 
on WrestleMania. <laughs> um, it was very interesting to see the concept and where that would go because obviously jostling against Darkade, he had to Vince basically had to come up with something unique and original to to push the brand. And you know, if it wasn't for these moves, which seem quite crude now, you know, we wouldn't be heading on towards WrestleMania 27. So it's interesting to see that lineage. But you know, looking back to the matches, I mean, obviously. It's easy to be back to the driver and say, I would have done this, I would have done this. But, I mean, I have to say, you know, it was entertaining. Um, I didn't think it was going to be. But having said it, when I looked at it, yeah, it was actually it was actually not bad. You only took, what, two tries to get through this? Yeah. two. Yeah, very good. That's good. I think I'm a three. Yeah, so... Uh, I, I'm, I'm a I am used to watching two and a half men, so I, <laughs> I built up a little bit of tolerance, maybe. That's it. I... Yeah, it took me probably... Uh, about six tries to get through it today <laughs> really it, it we were supposed was, to start recording it for us like yeah I'm just started like, yeah yeah <laughs> I, was, I was putting it off to be still honest still watching that Valentine promo <laughs> <laughs> I was putting it off to be honest because I watched this the last time I watched this what age was I um, my friend in school gave me the video and I was all excited I think I was like I was 10 9 or 10 or mm. something and at the time, I remember thinking, this is great, you know, because of the, the fact it's the first ever WrestleMania and I was a kid watching it and I thought it was brilliant. Um, looking at it now, you know what I'm going to say, you know, you know, well, what I'm going to, I thought it was terrible. <laughs> I thought it was horrendous from the start to the finish. Um, now, when I say, when I was saying throughout this, oh, it wasn't too bad. I mean, take that, don't take that out of context. That's you, relative to 1985. It's completely <laughs> relative to, yeah, the era. Um, if we saw that, if if say WrestleMania 28 was something similar, it would just be a complete utter <laughs> disaster. It really would. Have the promos gotten any better? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing that stayed the same. Um, um, so I I don't do stars or yeah, ratings, yeah. Um, but I would definitely recommend avoiding at all costs. <laughs> and um, would you listen to this podcast though? Yeah, yeah, loads of times. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> listen to us give out for an hour and seventeen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it take it eight times to get through. <laughs> Maybe you can get you this the first time though. Yeah. Uh, I reckon. Do not watch this paper. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Like the state of it. Like you know, you could, you know, at least you know we're doing something constructive having watched it. But like, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put it well I don't know if you needed to go to sleep I guess you know yeah, yeah. You'd, oh man you'd go to sleep at a protest pretty quickly like. <laughs> and the one abiding memory I have of it is it's just so dark in Madison Square Garden mm-hmm. so yeah. dark like. they uh, this is before lighting the crowd all right yeah so it's it's uh, kind of like how UFC is now they just light the mm-hmm. middle and then the yeah. rest of it's just black like wrestling is awesome 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 Okay, so just to talk about something quite easy. This is just a segment to talk about anything that makes you love wrestling a bit more. Anything that you want to find. So usually it'd be either like a cameo or a film with wrestlers in it, you know, or uh, any anything wrestling related that you can find outside of the wrestling bubble. Funny enough, that two Hulk Hogan uh, wrestling related things is that uh, before Vicky uh, Hulk Hogan um, had returned to WWE, you know, like not many people would have known about him where he was, but. Um, I remember on my way to school and 2FM was on and the bus driver usually played and when he re- basically won the title of the WWE when Hogan returned it was actually announced on 2FM and people on the bus actually remarked on it and this is kind of an incredible moment positively where or... they did get yeah, in terms of you know or like a kind of a, a figure that they know kind of through media like and even people that weren't really necessarily fans who could relate to that and I thought that was really interesting and then obviously my favourite uh, Hulk Hogan moment is... Uh, you I just to say that Ireland is not... You know, the wrestling is not indigenous to Ireland, so for it to be mentioned on general radio or any kind of media is pretty big. Though. And then uh, the other one for Hulk Hogan is uh, Gremlins 2, where, you know, if I was to go <laughs> watch a movie, I would wear the belt as well and eat my popcorn. But I do like when uh, he says to the Gremlins, you know, like, put the movie back on, uh, that they actually do, because they're scared of it. <laughs> and, uh, this, he's just, you know, he's so capable and uh, amazing. So they were my kind of, you know, just... Uh, wrestling can still, you know, contribute in a huge way to any type of uh, movies or you know, music as well. We have gremlins in the projection booth. Could you help us? Gremlins? In this theater? Now? Okay, you guys, 
Listen up. People pay good money to see this movie. When they go out to a theater, they want cold sodas, hot popcorn, and no monsters in the projection booth. Do I have to come up there myself? Do you think the Grimsters can stand up to the Hulkster? Well, if I were you, I'd run the rest of Gremlins too, right now. Sorry, folks. It won't happen again. Alright, <laughs> uh, so that's WrestleMania 1 in the books. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, next on the list is WrestleMania 2, but uh, I'm going to take a little detour from Beaten Park and review WWE's first fully fledged pay per view offering, the Wrestling Classic. Head to Facebook, search for OSW Review, or go to oswreview.com and uh, join the group. Tell me how much of an asshole I am. Uh, this is Jay Hunter with Mr. OC. Good night. And <laughs> Neil. Adios. Signing out. Our next classic battle is Hulk Hogan versus Jesse the Body Ventura. This one from the old Civic Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. But first, let's hear from the wrestler known simply as the Body. You bet I got something to say. You check it out. Ooh, the most beautiful body in professional wrestling. And I got something to talk about. Everywhere I've been going throughout the country, I've been touring with Fleetwood Mac. I've been partying with REO Speedwagon. Why, I've even arm wrestled the Weirwolf of London, Warren Zevon. I am the hottest thing in professional wrestling. I am the baddest dude that walks the streets today, Chump Hogan. And you think about that, Chump, because you could not beat me. You could not even beat Sylvester Stallone in the movie Rocky III. It was a draw. I'd have squashed that peanut in 30 seconds. Mmm, check it out. I get more beautiful looking every day, yeah. <laughs> one should be a dandy two of the biggest two of the strongest and certainly two who have no time either one for the other the incredible Hulk Hogan who entered to the eye of the tiger and Jesse the body Ventura who wants to be known as Mr. V. Mr. V. 
the sequel to Mr. T from the movie Rocky Three, and that of course was the movie in which Hulk Hogan had a starring role. Already, Jesse the Body has had a quick exit out of the ring and is now back in. Jim Mitchell is the referee for this one, and out goes Mr. V one more time. And Hulk goes out to meet him. And Jesse is quickly back in. And he motions the Hulk to come in. And the Hulk obliges. Jesse looking over the crowd. And of course, the crowd all for the one and only Hulk Hogan. These two strong men before a packed house here at the Civic Center in St. Paul, Minnesota. And out goes Ventura one more time, and Hogan is right in his tail. Well, this is more like a track meet so far than anything else. In comes Hogan, and he takes a forearm and a backhand from Jesse the Body Ventura. And a hard right hand, two of them. An arm twist. Immediately, Jesse the body, or Mr. V, going to work on that left shoulder. That is the shoulder that the Hulk injured some time ago in a match right here. Well, it was actually following an arm wrestling event between he and Jesse the body. And afterwards, the arm wrestling was with the Hulk and Ken Patera. And afterwards, what you have just seen is what they did to the Incredible Hulk, severely injuring that left shoulder. And you can certainly see the plan of attack that Jesse the Body Ventura has so far in this one. The Hulk winding up with that right hand. Let's see if he'll let it go or not. Jesse continues to twist that left arm. And the use of the hair in the takedown. Of course, Jesse denies that. All the time, hanging on to the arm bar that he has. Mm. Using the knee as a fulcrum. And trying or looking to hyperextend that arm. That is an extremely vulnerable and painful situation for Hulk Hogan. There's no question that either one of these men could just about snap the arm of the other one. Quite possibly not just about. Jesse the Body Ventura wanting to be called Mr. B. The crowd starting to get into the match now as their hero, the Incredible Hulk, has been on the short end. And again, you saw Jesse the Body grab a hold of Hogan's hair, pull him down to the mat. And of course, he denies it. stretch here Hulk Hogan has wrestled around the world 
one of the most one of the wrestlers most in demand in all parts of the country in all parts of the world whether that be in Japan Africa Europe Canada South America here in the United States Hogan trying to work his way out of this arm bar Jesse again reaches for the hair and he got enough of it and a little added pressure from his legs and down went the Hawk one more time. Bicep of Hulk Hogan. All right, now what's Jesse the Body got in store? Mm. Again, that's the move that injured Hulk Hogan. Following the arm wrestling event against Ken Patera here several months ago. That arm has to be numb now, no doom, no doubt about that. Jesse curls it up behind the back of the Incredible Hulk. He'll drive, well, no, I was going to say he's going to drive a leg into it, but did not, he chose instead to somersault on it. Use his head as the weapon. Now, there comes the knee into the arm. The Incredible Hulk has been unable to give his fans much to cheer about so far in this one. But they're not giving up on him, as you can hear. And I'm sure he can hear it, too. Ventura continues to hold on to that arm lock. Ventura wanting... Referee Jim Mitchell to check with Hogan to see if Hogan wants to submit, and Mitchell did. And of course, Hogan said no. Hogan drives an elbow into the side of the head of Ventura and breaks the hold. Here he comes, the Incredible Hulk. Drives him across the ring, and then, as he went to put a shoulder block into the body, the body got out of the way, and you saw what happened. That arm and shoulder of the incredible Hulk Hogan has taken a beating so far in this one and Ventura will not let up. There he goes again. He has that arm twisted and the wrist bent back painful position using the rope for leverage and driving his own forearm into the shoulder of the Hulk twice hopefully the Hulk has not sustained any injury here tonight oh my Ventura wanting to wrap it around Ten minutes, ten. Mm. Hogan is in pain. Ventura methodically working over his man so far in this one. Hulk unable to get going, getting get any offense generated. drives a fist into the arm and shoulder. Now what does he have in mind? Oh. A double hammer out of the arm of the Hulk. Can you see what's happening? The Hulk is coming alive and so is the crowd and he jumps into a bear hug. 
Ventura jumps into the Hulk Hogan bear hog. Hogan carries him across the ring and drives him into the turnbuckle. And now it seems that the Incredible Hulk is giving Jesse the body some of his own medicine and Ventura doesn't like it. Oh, the Hulk is working over the arm. You can see the pain in Ventura's face. Watch this. says Hulk Hogan and the crowd loves it. Let's go says Hulk Hogan and he drives a thumb into the eye of Jesse the body. He does it twice. Hogan wants to punish this man for sure. There's an elbow into the chest. That can take the wind out of your sails quickly, too. You get it down there right around the sternum. Two men, the two big men battling outside the ring. Referee Jim Mitchell is following them. Hogan takes a chair after Ventura. And Ventura takes it away from him. And now we have a real Pier 6 brawl going on outside the ring. And I think they're going to call this one. Referee Jim Mitchell has counted the two of them out outside the ring, disqualified both of them, and they continue to go at it. The Hulk driving his fist to the head of Jesse the Body Ventura. This match is all over for all intents and purposes, but then again it may not be. Ventura climbs back into the ring. Let's see if Hogan will go back in after him. Despite the fact that this has been called, Hogan grabs a chair. In he comes. Referee Jim Mitchell trying to stand between the two. Look out. Ventura ducks, gets out of the way, and gets out of the ring. Is Ventura going back to the locker room? It looks like he is. This one is no contest. It is no contest. Undoubtedly, Hulk Hogan was the single biggest name in professional wrestling during the 1980s.